Hello and welcome to After Before Friday week number 46. This week I'm post-processing a photo that I took in my own home one afternoon just playing around. So I'm going to show you how I played around with this. Um, the first thing that I'm going to do, I actually went in and I cropped it and I just kept to the rule of thirds um, on the rule of thirds overlay. And you know, this is the new Lightroom and it's a little hinky at times, so bear with me, okay? It, it does that weird thing. Um, and I'm just moving in from the left and putting that uh, left hand grid line smack dab in the middle of the candle. So click done. And then I'm going to move in, I'm going to move in and check whether there was any chromatic aberration. And in fact, there is. You can see it in the purple here in the candlestick. And if I move down, there's a little bit more in here. So I'm going to remove that before I do anything else. I'm going to come back up here. And to do that, I come on lens into the lens correction panel. And I'm going to click color and click remove chromatic aberration. And then click on this little eyedropper. There we go that I will take over and I'm going to place it on the purple fringe. And we'll see what it does. See, it just removed it, um, which is wonderful. It's very easy, but I'm going to come down and see if it's removed at all. And as I recall, it was, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, to deal with this area too. So I'm going to come back and I click on the eyedropper again. And sometimes you get an, message. No, there we go. It removed it. Sometimes it says that it can't do it anymore, but this time it did, and it removed all of um, all of that purple, greenish um, color. And, and it comes when there's um, contrast between light and dark. There's not a whole, and, and there is, there was contrast here between the dark of the, of the wall and the light of the candle, of the candlestick. So that's why that happened. Okay, I'm going to click done and I'm going to go back to the full view and from here I'm going to do my um, export into or edit in Color Effects Pro. You guys have all seen this. It's going to create, I'm, I'm going to use edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments and uh, the program is going to create a TIFF file down here in my film strip it's thinking, thinking, thinking. Um, and once it does that, there it goes. Oh, well, very quickly. That, of course, again, is the file that any changes I make in Color Effects Pro will be brought back into once I hit save to my changes. And these are, yikes, um, a previous filter that I used, Detail Extractor. I'm not going to use that here, so I'm going to exit out. Um, on this one, Let's go back and go into the various, the menu of all the filters. And you guys know by now that one of my favorites is Pro Contrast and number three, Dynamic Contrast. So I'm going to click on that and you can toggle the effects on and off to see what, it's, what it does and doesn't do. Now this one, I want to play with the sliders because this is more than I want. So I am going to... Um, Let's see, what did I do? I'm going to look to, I, I, I'm going to start with the dynamic contrast slider itself and just bring down the amount of the effect. So I put it right about here. And actually, I brought it down even more. Okay, so to, to about here. And then I'm going to um, move the color cast and correct contrast um, sliders. Just, just a hair, I don't know. I'm just looking at my notes and recreating what I did in my notes. Okay, so let's click on and off. It's just, it's a slight change, but enough of one. Um, and, and, you know, subtle a little bit and not too over the top. Am I making sense? Okay, let's, let's keep moving here. The second filter that I like to use that you all should be familiar with now is the dark and light and center. And I'm going to come it. I'm going to select default. And again, you'll see the values here. Now I've done. Um, I'm going to change a number of values here. First of all, I'm going to change the shape from the um, circle to the oval. 
and it just it, it brings it in a little bit on this on this photo. Um, from here, I am going to change the center lumosity. I'm going to bring it down to oh, about here, and um, the border lumosity I'm going to make a little bit darker. I really want to highlight the candle. And then the center size, again, I'm going to bring that down a bit. And now the fun part, which is just basically a very flexible post-crop vignette or, or vignetting tool, I'm going to place the center by clicking on the Place Center button, bringing the crosshairs over to where I want to put it, and I'm going to click here. Um, let's see the difference. Um, before and after, again with the pro contrast, just a little bit of a pop. So at this point, if I wanted to, I could hit Save Recipe and save, um, as you see, click to save current filters as a custom recipe and it will store in the program. So if I wanted to tweak what I had done, I wouldn't have to recreate this from scratch. Um, and it's hard that there's, there's, otherwise there's no record of my changes once I hit save. But this recipe, in fact, has already been saved. Um, I just recreated it here for purposes of the video. So I'm going to hit save here, and it's going to um, export it back into Lightroom into that empty TIFF file. OK. Now, once I got it back into Lightroom, I still wasn't 100% happy with it. You know, why not? That's always me. Um, I wanted to do a little bit more with the candlestick. So um, I'm going to, bear with me, um, I use, I'm going to use a combination of radial filters to create um, uh, selective adjustments. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to highlight um, the candle itself a little bit more. Just brighten the candle. So I'm going to click and drag. See, there we go. Okay. It's doing that funky thing again. There we go. Um, and I'm going to decrease the size a little bit. There's a lot of playing around, <laughs> around um, in positioning these filters, or these, um, yeah, the radial filters. So I'm going to leave it about you know what, I'm not going to mess with it anymore. I'm just going to leave that there. And I'm going to um, increase the exposure. Well, first, I'm going to zero out the effect. Um, make sure you do that whenever you use either your adjustment brush, the radial filter, or the, or the um, gradient filter. Make sure that you start with a clean slate of, of all the sliders, and you do that by double-clicking on effect. And from here, I'm going to just increase the exposure of that of that center part of the candlestick. Okay. Um, now I want to add a second radial filter, so I'm going to come back here and I'm going to add a second one. Click again, and this time um, I'm going to use it as yet another uh, post crop vignette tool. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to make it a little bit wider than the other. And for this one, I want the effect to take place outside of the circle. So I'm going to uncheck Invert Mask. Uh, and again, zero out. And um, this time, I'm going to decrease the exposure around the perimeter to about here. That's a little bit too dark. Um, if you can be more precise by clicking in the box and entering your own values um, if you want to do it that way. Again, I'm recreating what was created before, so I'm, I'm being a little um, picky about the values I put in. Um, OK, and I'm going to click Done. And at that point, I'm going to actually, I added one more effect. And why I'm, I, from my notes, I added yet a little bit more of a vignette. To here. So let's go, let me go back to the original. Okay, this was as it was imported. And here's the final. And I just really wanted to highlight the side light on the beautiful side light on the candlestick. So that's it. Um, I hope you've learned something um, new from the video. And uh, if you have any questions, please 
leave them in the comments and um, I'll be happy to, to answer anything that you might want to ask. Um, thanks very much everybody for watching.